Well, it's hard to believe it's been a full year, Tom, since the Wyndham Championship where you ended up getting your first win on the PGA Tour. Does it feel like it was that long ago? No, it does not. It's pretty crazy how 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 fast time goes. Um, man, like if you think about it, this week was just I was I wasn't even thinking about wins or whatever. You know, was, I had my tour card and I was excited to play the PGA Tour 20, 2023. And you know, I was just kind of strolling along, um, you know, enjoying my last what I thought was going to be my last event of the year. And um, no, it's uh, it's crazy. Yeah, it was obviously a bursting, you know, onto the scene moment for you. But I think a lot of people don't realize is that in 2022, you actually had a pretty solid year to get the special temporary status. And then, like you said, have a card the following year. So you kind of just showed up to the Wyndham Championship with some house money and said, let's just let it let's let it ride. hundred percent. It was uh, I was I was going to go home the next week after Wyndham. Um, So, you know, I was just. I was just after that quad, man, like on the first hole, I was just trying to make the cut and uh, finish the year, finish the year right, kind of go back home and enjoy and celebrate. But uh, no, that was not the case. I had to, you know, play two more uh, playoff events. So, uh, yeah, like you said, you know, house money that week and it was probably the most freest, you know, golf I've, I've ever played. Amazing. Can you walk me through the quad? Because I've played the Wyndham. I played the they had the <laughs> old Footjoy AJGA event there. I know there's a car path up there on the right that's definitely in play if you block one. But if my memory serves me correct, you hit eight shots. Is that right or I no? Did. I hit all eight shots. Correct. I hit all <laughs> eight shots. <laughs> um, no, I I right is actually was gonna. I was probably not gonna make an eight. Um, I hit into that left. But I was trying to play a cut and went dead straight into that left bunker, mm -hmm, but it wasn't mm -hmm. in the bunker. It got up to the lip on the grass. So I really didn't have a shot. And I tried to hit like a chip seven or because I only had like 130 yards to the green. Like it was just a chip, try to chip a seven to the front of the green. And I, it was one of those where it just, when you catch a little bit too, like you hit the ground too, like kind of too steep. Yeah. And the ball just comes out straight up and straight down kind of shot. Mm -hmm. So it went 30 yards and, and stayed in the rough. Um, and back pin so making sure like on the third shot like not trying to go long just play a smart shot and no i hit it long of course um <laughs> left myself an impossible chip i'm like okay let's try to I know, i'm saying one two three i'm playing four so i'm trying okay let's try to walk away with a bogey and i chunk my chip like it goes, <laughs> no, no sorry, i don't chunk my chip i hit a chip that goes up the ridge and come came back down so my fifth shot, I chunked it, went like yard. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to chunk it again. So I putted it and it got, barely got it on. And then I missed my seven and made an eight. I mean, yeah, that's, that's a heck of an eight right there. I mean, yeah, if I yeah, put yeah. you in that position right now and put the golf ball right in that same spot, what are you making? What are you making right now? On my fourth shot? or No, 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 no. I'm just taking you back. You've already hit your tee shot. Let's just say I put you in the exact same situation again. So What's from, the from score from you're making two. this time? Yeah. Maybe I think if I had a chance, I, I think a good score, I would have probably chipped out. You uh, know? Okay. Look at the seasoned out. veteran now chipping it yeah. out in the fairway. But, but people don't know this. I hit it in the same bunker on the second round. Oh gosh. And I chipped <laughs> out that time and I made par. Like people oh, don't realize that. Yeah. Wow. yeah. I, hit, I hit it left in the same bunker. I'm like, okay, this is deja vu. I cannot make eight again. <laughs> so I chipped out and played a smart shot and uh, walked away with a par. Yeah. I just figured you hit every single fairway and every single green after the first hole because when you start out four over and you yeah. end up as many under as you were, I mean, mm -hmm. just incredible. And, and I will say this. Uh, it's pretty cool too. The tour championship, Rory McIlroy gets the victory and he referenced to you in his, in his post round interviews saying, yeah. you know, if Tom Kim can make an eight at the Wyndham championship and win the golf tournament on his first hole, I can make triple at Eastlake on, on hole number one and still win the tour championship. So how does it feel that Rory McIlroy sees you as inspiration? <laughs> I would like uh, I like a slice of that check. Actually, <laughs> that would be nice. Uh, no, but it was it was really cool for me. I thought um, just to you know have a player like Rory kind of think about that. It was it was kind of it was kind of cool for me to. I, I think I was at home, didn't make tour championships, so 
um, you know, seeing that comment was, and him winning actually, you know, on top of that was kind of pretty cool. Yeah, that was an incredible uh, East Lake and Tour Championship to watch. I'm sure we're going to be seeing you there this year. But, you know, I think what the coolest thing about you winning at the Wyndham is that it it played you into the President's Cup team. What was it like in that call from Trevor Emmelman being on in an, in an international team, being so young? Yeah, it was um, really like President's Cup really wasn't on my radar. Like none of none of the whole fall was, wasn't really on my radar. And I think I first met Trevor at the British Open. You know, I was playing a practice round with Siwoo and then Trevor came on my fourth hole. Um, and he walked for like two holes and I was, I was nervous because I came <laughs> off, I came off my third thing of the Scottish. So like, I knew I was in that kind of zone of, you know, if I don't make the top six, I can at least, you know, have the chance of captain's picks. And I knew he was kind of, uh, looking for some players and I, you know, I, I, I did get nervous. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, no, but I was able to hit really good shots in front of him. So, you know, I kind of told myself, you know what, maybe I have a chance at this team and, um, to win and to kind of just automatically qualify was no, it was it was a dream come true for me for sure. Well, well, my memories from the President's Cup of you were the ripped pants that you had oh, uh, one day, oh, and then God. I the stories about how much food you ate in the team room, you pumping up the crowd on your tee shot on Sunday. You know, like those were my memories of you from that. But I want to hear about what's your favorite memories were from that from that whole week it was i mean it was just in general that team vibe i've never experienced anything like that because golf is again such an individual sport like smiley i'm pretty sure you know but like you just play for yourself the whole you know whole a year a year or two you know what i mean you just kind of do your own thing you know you're always focused on yourself but that one week you're just kind of really focused on like other people too, like other players, making sure your teammates are ready to go. Or when you're playing with a partner, making sure he's comfortable with um, what he's doing. And, you know, like if he has an important putt or something, making sure he's confident and comfortable. So that kind of aspect I thought was really cool. Um, I really thought maybe we could do a few more events like that. That would be really nice. Mm -hmm. Um, But just that aspect of that whole team environment, you know, um, and when you make a putt, you're just not making a putt for yourself. You're making a putt really for, not only your teammates, but the whole, you know, the whole fan base. So I thought that that aspect was just, was unbelievable. Well, those first couple of days, y'all were, y'all were getting beat pretty good. And oh, I was actually, smashed. <laughs> <laughs> but smashed. I, y'all were, you were playing Xander Schauffele and Patrick Cantlay one afternoon. And I was sitting there on 14, which is the par three for that event. Normally number 17. And yeah. you made a birdie. I believe you were playing with Hideki Matsuyama and y'all were down. Mm-hmm. Y'all needed to kind of make a run. Y'all ended up yeah. losing the match. Mm-hmm. But you make this putt and just gave this big, vicious roar, like, let's go. And I was thinking, oh, my God. And I remember watching Patrick and Xander specifically because y'all walked past them and they uh-huh. stayed on the green to putt a couple. And they were like, oh, my God, like, we did not expect that at all. So, yeah. I mean, you were kind of just really just to me, the, the energizer bunny of that team and, and really rallied the troops heading in to singles play with that big putt on 18 that you made. Yeah. I mean, really like, you know, I think we were, we were three or four down, I think going to that hole. We were, I think we were dormant actually. I'm not really sure, but um, like the, like obviously if you're not up, it's, you know, like definitely I can see people saying, what, what, what's he doing? Like, but <laughs> I, really I was one me, of those people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like, that was awesome though. <laughs> <laughs> but for the reason why I did it was because like I said, we were just getting beaten by the Americans. They were just playing so well. Um, you know, we, we definitely had our backs against the wall and I wanted my team, like Hideki was obviously one of our international stars. And um, I wanted him to know, I wanted, whether, you know, I knew obviously if that putt went in, you know, maybe it could be on TV. I wanted my whole teammates to know. I want the whole fan base to know that, you know, even though we're down, I still want, you know, every single putt to go in. I still want every point on the board. You know, I'm not giving up. Like, um, I'm here to fight and I'm trying to bring that energy to the whole, you know, whole team, whole fan base. So um, that's what, you know, I was very sore after the President's Cup because of all my shouting, all my fist bumps for sure. <laughs> Um, but no, that was definitely the big reason that played part of it. You know, when I think of the Ryder cup, I think of 
the U.S. team. They get to play the President's Cup, the Ryder Cup. There's a, an identity and a culture there. It's, and then the same kind of goes with the European team on the Ryder Cup. And for so long, we've kind of talked about the international team, that there's just so many different cultures and backgrounds that there's not quite the same identity and culture necessarily in the international team room. But I feel like it kind of changed this year in Charlotte with a different group, a bunch of young guys that were hungry and, and wanted to prove people wrong. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, it was definitely, obviously it's my first one. So it's really hard for me to be able to talk their experience. I'm pretty sure Adam would probably be the best player to talk to about that. But um, no, I definitely did hear the veterans talking about, you know, this year I really felt like we really feel like, you know, there's, it's more of a, uh, it's, it's a, it's more like a, like we're one, like we're like a one team almost like we're just, we're, we're, we're united. We're together instead of like the previous years where come, we're kind of, everyone wasn't kind of on the same page or something. Um, I'm not hundred percent sure about that, but yeah, for me, I really thought that again, because of we had some veterans and then we had like myself, a lot of rookies, uh, we kind of came all together and obviously um, having a few Asian players on the team, uh, a lot of Australians on the team, a few South Africans on the team, just, you know, I think all of us just kind of came together, even though we lost the President's Cup, it still kind of felt like, man, this not this is going to help us in the future. You know, we're, we kind of set a good baseline for, for us upcoming, you know, in Canada and, and many more years to come. Um, definitely was, I think that that week in Charlotte kind of, we kind of felt that, you know, good, good years are going to come along our way. I a hundred percent agree with you as well. And I, and props to Trevor Immelman. I thought he did an incredible job with the team room and it seemed he was a, a, a great, um, great leader that entire week. And one last question about the president's cup. And I kind of got this from Jordan and he referenced how really a back nine of a major championship can be oh so similar to, you know, a back nine of a president's cup. And knowing that you have major experience now and have been in a contention, do you, can you see the correlation between the two as far as just your nerves go or just the crowds and the energy? Um, I think for me, the president's cup was probably a little bit more intense just because at that time I didn't have my major championship experiences. Um, this year was my first full time being able to play all four major championships. Um, but at that time for me, like, man, was it like nerve wracking because there's so many people again, you're not <laughs> playing for yourself. You have your teammate with you. Um, it was no, that, that played a big role for me this year playing major championships coming down, like some stretches, uh, giving myself a few chances, like that vibe of being, you know, Oh, I've been here before and I don't have the pressure of not letting down my partner. I, you know, it's just all on me. So that was kind of it almost helped me just kind of be more calm during major championships. But I can hundred percent agree with Jordan. Like the, the pressure is unlike any other in those team events when you, you would think, Oh, it's just, an, you know, it's just an event. Like you're supposed to have fun. No, you're like, cause I'm, cause every single player is so competitive. You just, you want to win so badly for your team that just drives out that, you know, the pressure, the, the nerves coming down the stretch and, I, I haven't led a major yet, so I don't really, I can't really say, but um, no, I can see how it's really similar. I think a lot of people kind of forget that that was the first week that Joe Scovern, uh, that y'all, that y'all worked together. How did that relationship start? You know, where was it just kind of mutual interest? And and then he said, Hey, do you want to come work the presence cup? What a great first week to get on the back. <laughs> um, so obviously, you know, for me, I was uh, making my, way to the PJ tour. I, I wanted a, I wanted an experienced caddy on, on the bag. Um, cause I knew there, there were going to be a lot of first, I needed someone who was, uh, who I can rely on kind of in a lot of, since if I, since I don't know the golf courses where I need to be, put the ball golf ball, you know, where I need to miss it, all those little things. And obviously, you know, him and Ricky have a great relationship. You know, they, they, you know, they really, you know, had a really, really great run and um, I have a huge respect for their relationship and, um, you know, they split and I, I, it was great timing for me. Like I was looking for a caddy and I reached out in the sense of not really expecting anything um, because, just, you know, I was, I was really coming off a as a rookie basically. So 
um, you know, I reached out saying, Hey, like, um, I would love to be able to have a chance to work with you. Um, you know, it would be great for me uh, as, you know, I, you know, I, as a, as someone who's coming out, I, you know, I, I could really use someone who's as, as experienced as, as you. And, uh, he definitely made me wait on it a little bit. He played hard to get, <laughs> uh, no, but it was uh, all jokes, all jokes aside. No, he, um, yeah, he, he definitely came on board and I was like, Hey, yeah, President's Cup's going to be the first week we're going to work together. And I thought it was a great idea because not only was it our first week, but because of how big the event is, like you can kind of sense a vibe if it works or not on the biggest stage. So right. instead of wait, instead of waiting for a few months before like a major championship comes, we kind of tested right away. And it was coming for me, feeling that pressure in the President's Cup, like one of one of the first really really big intense events for me. I kind of got to saw I kind of got to see how reliable Joe was on the bag. Um, he definitely helped a lot. Obviously when I fist bumped like crazy shouted, he was always so calm. Just, you know, I used, you know, I had plenty of putts where I left my putter went off the green he picked it up. He picked my, he picked my golf ball. <laughs> the ball. Um, so all those little things of how calm and just uh, how, how he was able to guide me through the golf course was, was really, was really interesting for me to see. And um to this day, it's just, I rely a lot on him. I don't really look at my yardage book anymore. So, um, that kind of helps. Yeah. And I agree with that because I got to watch it firsthand, uh, watch y'all two work together at the Shriners. I was walking with y'all's group a couple of different times that week. And my initial takeaway was I couldn't believe how y'all's communication was. It reminded me of Jordan Spieth and Michael Greller because y'all's back and forth was was so in depth. It's like y'all had been working for five to six years together. That's where I felt like the relationship was at that time, just in how you communicated, which to me, I was like, okay, this is going to be a slam duck deal. And, and first off, I wanted to congratulate you on winning what I consider to be the fifth major championship as somebody who's won the Shriners classic, (laughs) (laughs) but man, you got the W you you took down Patrick Cantley, who was, you know, world-class player, you know, what, what was it, what was your kind of memory of that week? Well, the first memory that pops into mind, I got really, really sick that week. So really? I was only, yeah. So I got there on Sunday, but I couldn't practice. I don't think I could practice at all on Monday. Um, maybe I did for a few hours, but it was, I just I played nine, nine, um, you know, and I was feeling really tired. Um, I didn't, I wasn't able to sleep a lot. I was coughing and I was just, you know, it was, it was a nightmare and, um, no. And I think that kind of really helped me really, I was able to win because I was just trying to survive each day. Like I wasn't really thinking about winning. I was just trying to get through each day. I didn't even notice that. (laughs) So now Joe is always telling me, man, we really need to get you sick because every time you get sick, you play, you play unbelievable. Um, no. So like that week for me, obviously first, again, that was our first, me and Joe's first individual event, you know, and, yeah, uh, just, you know, won our first event out and coming down the stretch of it again against Patrick, obviously an unbelievable world-class player. And, um, you know, I just try to really play my own game, trying to not really look at leaderboards and stuff. So, well, you needed again, to make birdies that week because it oh. was, I think y'all got some 25, 600 par. It was incredible. Uh, I know Cantley was on 59 watch one day. You, it seemed like you shot something in the mid to low sixties every single day. Yeah. It's definitely a course where you I'm smiling. I'm pretty sure, you know, cause you've won there, but you really need to go low. You can't make the stakes out there. You just got to keep, you know, fifth major, Betty. Fifth yeah. major. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I had a chance to catch up with Joe. You know, actually I, I talked to him a good bit. He's always been a good friend of mine. Somebody that gives me re- reliable information. He's, extremely intelligent when it comes to the golf course and somebody that always kind of gives me good feedback with stuff. But a lot of times I'm asking about, you know, your game, how things are going. And he always is like, you know, this is a good golf course for Tom this week. And he'll say that all the time, but uh, (laughs) you know, what surprised me though recently is he said that you've worked very hard on your putting this year. And my memory was from you at the presence cup that you just seem like you made every single putt that you looked at. 
So in my head, I'm thinking, okay, he's a really straight hitter, but he's just an incredible putter. But this year, Joe was saying that's actually been probably your biggest weakness. And so I'm just kind of curious, what's the, what's uh what have you been working on with the putter this year? Yeah. So I think obviously like last year was one of my best putting years. So like coming off that and you don't putt nearly as, as close. You're like, if you're <laughs> thinking you're struggling and you're like, you're not making anything and it's frustrating. So, uh, but at the same time, I think a lot of it came from just a lot of the, just mental stuff on the greens, like, you know, feeling like I needed to make everything because of making everything <laughs> because you made um, everything. Yeah. Exactly. Cause I made a lot of putts. So I feel like I, you know, as like, instead of like just doing your own process, it was kind of like expecting to make it. So this year has been definitely battling a little bit of trying to let things go and just kind of free up the putter and kind of almost wanting it too much really. Mm -hmm. Um, this year has been tough for me and I made a putter switch at Augusta. Um, and no, I feel like I was, I've been putting it really good, been stroking good, but hasn't really dropped that much. And Mm -hmm. really, literally at the Scottish was kind of the week where it's just kind of all that hard work this year on the green, on the greens basically kind of came and I've had that good finish because I've always had decent weeks sometimes and I'm not a 185 ball speed guy. So I need to kind of make shots a little bit on the greens and um, try to, you know, have one less three putt and all these things. So, um, you know, I just kind of, once I got that putter going, man, like not only does it like, help you score better it just gives you that momentum on the on the next shot as well you know you're not frustrated by missing an eight footer for birdie and walking up to that tee and realizing man i should have made that putt and then you flare drive and then you make bogey and then you know things pile on so just kind of that mental aspect of just kind of really just letting it go and um just kind of enjoy the game of putting you know just trusting your process kind of, that's kind of been the big part well, I would say that most PGA Tour players have a pretty I would say the the warm-up routine is typically guys will go hit putts, go hit balls and then hit a couple putts before they go. And I'm standing there on the first green at the Scottish Open. This is before your Saturday tee time. And okay. I can't remember exactly what time you're going off, but I'm standing there with Joe and and you're already on the putting green. I'm like just looking at the clock and he's like he goes in like 40 minutes or 35 minutes, but you're already on the putting green. You've already hit balls. And I'm thinking, I don't think I've ever seen anybody get off the range that early and be on the putting green that soon. Is that something you've always done? So a little bit has, um, with the routine, I am, I am very different with a lot of guys. I hit, I I go to the range first and then I go chip and I go putt. Um, that's a little, has played a little bit of like back in Asia when I played in Asia, like that was just it was some like the putting green was too far or the tee box was too far so you just kind of get the range out of the way and then you go <laughs> putt so back in korea like there's there's a lot of golf courses that don't have golf like ranges on the golf course so you would drive bef- so you, from the hotel you would go to the driving range hit balls go to the clubhouse eat and then chip and putt and then head to the tee. So when I played on the Korean tour uh, during when I, in COVID before I, before I got out to the PJ tour, um, that was just kind of how it was over there. And back in back on the Asian tour as well, um, just that's how it kind of kind of always went. So like I've just I thought about changing. Like British Open was the first time that was different because the chipping green was so close to the clubhouse. And then mm. how far the range was. That was the one time I changed. I, I had to change it. It wasn't like my choice, but no, it worked well. So I might start chipping and then hit and then putt. So we'll see. I mean, that's just incredible, man. I I just, I was, my head was kind of in a tailspin <laughs> trying to figure out what's going on. I was like, this is, yeah. this is crazy. And, and yeah. Joe was like, you know, I, I would say something, but he always seems to birdie the first hole more often than not. So <laughs> he actually kind of said, I, you know, why would I say anything? He gets off to hotter starts than most players. So, you know, keep doing what you're doing, man. I, 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 I love it. But so you got to play with Rory on Saturday and Sunday at the Scottish open you know, what is it like battling Rory? You know, I was, I was out there in the elements with you guys. And to me, it seemed like 
all the fans obviously ha- are in full support of Rory McIlroy, but you held your own, man. Like you played some great golf. What was it? What was just those couple of days like? No, it was cool, man. It was really like I played a I played a bunch of golf with Rory, but like kind of coming down the stretch of a tournament, that's it's never Different. happened. For me. So, uh, obviously, you know, if you're in the UK, you just Rory's, you know. Well, even when you're in the U.S., like you're just, they're just going to go for Rory. You know, it's kind of like the Tiger effect where yes. everyone's rooting for Tiger. Yes. So, um, but like, you know, for me, it was just man, this is this is a dream. Like, obviously, it's we've played a lot of golf together, but kind of coming down the, coming down the stretch as a first. So, um, to be able to have a chance to uh, at least have a chance to uh, battle out with him and beat him, like I've worked my whole life for this. Like, this is what it's all about. So I was I was I was able to enjoy. Uh, my whole my whole experience and obviously i really like the golf course so um having, you having the time there. Life, yeah yeah <laughs> having the time of my life um but i was well aware of like hey like everyone's gonna go for rory like it's just the way it is if i was a fan i would root for rory i would not root for me um that's just, i was reading for you out there i appreciate that man. thank you uh, one of one of three million but i appreciate that um uh, no but it's just it's, we're gonna play our own game um Obviously, it's a it's a Korean title sponsor event, so wanting to really play well and have a chance to, you know, push it till eighteen, but uh, wasn't to be. But you know, I felt like I really tried my best, and um, hopefully, I get him next time. Real quick, what was your? You had a pretty good vantage point of that two iron he had on eighteen. What what did that look like in the air? I was unbelievable. That was really one of the most craziest shots. Like it was just, I was speechless after that. Like I talked, we had this little thing, we had this little event Monday at the British and I I had to talk about it. And I was saying like how unbelievable the shot was. And Rory was, you know, Rory was right there and I told him like, dude, this is, that was one of the most unbelievable shots I've ever had to see. Like coming down the stretch, like you were there smiling, like, like the wind was humming down. It was like 40 miles an hour. My cap was flying away and he hits this two iron to, you know, 12 feet and makes the putt but for me like to be honest i give him kudos for making the putts on 17 and 18 because you can hit two good good call shots like it's rory like it's just it's possible but to make those two putts with you know with 40 mile an hour win that's it's really not easy like to be able to stroke it without kind of shaking that's it's really just shows just shows you like how good of you know of a player he is yeah that was it was impressive to watch and but before the round kind of went going, I was talking uh, with your agent, Ben Harrison, and and also Joe as well. And, you know, to me, and even observing, when the conditions seem to get worse, Tom Kim seems to get better. And is that more of a mindset or do you think your game just fits in just being in, in the mud, just like a mudder, like a, <laughs> it's, it's just <laughs> I impressive. Know where that's coming from. I know where that's coming from. Uh, no, it's, um, yeah, I for me I really like hard go- hard condition golf courses because I feel like it really shows the pure ball strikers almost who are able to control the golf ball, mm-hmm. who are able to kind of grit it out, you know, like who are mentally tough. You know, I, I really like that aspect of it and I really fell in love with the majors this year just because of sometimes I felt like I might have not had my best, but I was still able to really play conservative and smart and um, you know, a, you know, be able to kind of switch the aggressive side and the conservative side. So, um, instead of like, you know, feeling like you're playing well, but you're not making one or two putts and you're like 80th, you know, but in majors, you're like one or two mistakes don't really affect you as much as the other events. You know what I mean? Cause you still have so many golf holes. You can make up one or two shots. Um, so for me, I feel like that mindset of just ex- being able to accept tough conditions and, just kind of being the moment because you really can't get ahead of yourself in tough conditions. So um, I love that aspect of it. Yeah. You just got to be a grinder we, and, exactly. and, or a mutter. And we did kind of reference oh that. So yeah. I don't see how we oh can't God. not talk about the mud incident. You need a plaque at Oak Hill on the six. As soon as you said mutter, I knew it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, like what happened there? <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, obviously that seventh hole is just, no, sorry. That's six hole. Is it? Yeah, the six, six yeah. the six is a really difficult hole at Oak Hill. It's on. It's one of the hardest golf holes I've ever had to play. It is 
so difficult. It is like so narrow, but not only is it narrow, you don't have a bailout at all. Like if you're in that left bunker, which a driver gets to, you're chipping out. But if you hit a three wood, you're left with 240 like into an arrow green. Like you just, have, you can't do anything there. And missing my drive right. I was, pra- I was playing a practice round with Jordan JT on, it was rather Tuesday or Wednesday. And I remember Jordan tried to go in that mud and his foot kind of, kind of got in and came out. And I realized that it, it wasn't, it was kind of risky, but like, they told me my, my ball landed in the mud. So if I could chip out and somehow try to make Paul or, or Brody, I think it was two over. So I'm trying to save every single shot I can. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, <laughs> right before I went in, I told myself this could happen. This could like end badly, but how bad can it get? And two, I told myself, man, look, when I retire one day and if, if I don't fight for if at, and at the end of the day, if I haven't fought for every single shot, like I would, I think I'd be able to regret it. Like, I don't want that. You know, I'm, I want, I want no stones on turn. So I go in first few steps were fine. I'm like, okay, just be careful with your stepping. Like you're in a landmine, just be careful. And then one foot just kind of sinks in and it gets like, gets onto my, gets onto my shin. I'm like, okay, this isn't, as long as it's here, it's not bad. Just don't get anything on, on your pants where you, you have to do like take a bath um, basically. But, you know, I was able to get, you know, get kind of close. And then I just sunk, man. Like I just sunk, like went waist high. And, um, you know, I told myself once it got waist high, there was no turning back. So I was just trying to like find my ball. And, and the worst thing about that experience was I was not able to find my ball. So I just wasted time <laughs> and I was trying to get out and literally like I got stuck and I couldn't get out. And I called Joe from the other side. I was like, Hey, I can't get out, Joe. And he's like, just get out. I'm like, I can't, I can't move. And he comes around and he's trying to like help me out. And like, he's like, well, if I go in and I sink, we're both kind of, you know, we're both, we're both kind of effed. So he tries to get me out like, okay, this is, this is going nowhere. So I'm like, you know, I get my shirt dirty and everything. I'm all muddy. And he's trying to get a number and I go in, I'm like, well, I can't play like this. Like I have to be able to wash this off. So I go in the water and this is like, it's like 55 degrees. Like it's cold. It's really cold. And I'm bathing myself, um, taking all the mud out and take my shirt off, just put a jacket on. Um, No, but I'll never forget that feeling of realizing that I was able to drop in the first cut. I was afraid that I was going to drop in the rough. So I, you know, realized, man, I had a line, dropped in the first cut, made bogey, which was unbelievable after all that. And that just, you know, that feeling when you're like, (sighs) I can't believe I'm saying this, when you're wet and like you're kind of kneel down, you can feel the, like, the mud just kind of dripping down your legs. It was just, it was, oh, it was an awful experience. But I, I can't say that I've, I, I have experienced mud dripping <laughs> down my leg on the golf course, but <laughs> dude, I love that you went all in. I mean, that's just, it just, <laughs> I love it. I mean, that's just Tom Kim. He, he's going to go find sure. whatever golf ball he can hit in there. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's I didn't know the story that you were drop. You got to drop it in the first cut and you still made a five. So just, exactly. just honestly, just a 10 minute waste of time. And I'm sitting here looking at pictures from you and in, in, oh in the God. mud and you finished, oh you, bas- you basically finished the round in capris uh-huh. <laughs> so, <laughs> rolled up, rolled up pants. It looks like capris, which maybe could be a, a fashion trend on the PJ tour uh, before we know it. Maybe. So, but like, the funny, the funny thing was like, I think after that happened, I was walking down seven fairway and I was talking to Sam, uh, Sam Burns. We were playing together. <laughs> Sam, you're playing with Sam. <laughs> I'm playing with Sam, right? And Even better. He, he loves to give me a hard time. So, uh, walking down the fairway, I'm like, and he's like, man, I hope that, I hope they have that on camera. I'm like, dude, I don't think so. Like it's too late at night. Like, I think nobody's like, nobody's going to get it. I'm so lucky. And I get to ninth green. I'm like, there's cameras everywhere. I'm like, <laughs> you've got to be joking. Like, there's no way. And I look at the cameraman. I'm like, you didn't get it, right? Like, oh, we got it. I'm like, get out of here. And then I shot three over the first round. Obviously, not not the best start to the major championship. Finished really late, obviously, because of the delay. And I have like five or six stops of interviews. I'm like, really? You really want to talk to <laughs> I mean, the man? 
It was it was must see TV. You could not look away. I I was I wasn't watching at the time. I'd been watching all day, and at some point I went and ran an errand, and I get a text from my dad that said OMG, and I was like, what? Did what could have possibly happened on a Thursday at six thirty p.m. that was it <laughs> OMG worthy? And then he said Tom Kim. I was like, okay, and then he sent me a picture. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> uh, at least you didn't see it live, Smiley. I'm grateful for that. Oh man, bad. Hey, Crow, I'm gonna have to go back and watch that on YouTube. Oh, God, it's just, it is amazing. Um, the link is below, everybody. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna go from one thing to the next. We're gonna go from the mud to the open championship, where I see a report that came out that Tom Kim hurts his ankle at rental house from slipping and falling. Mm-hmm. Okay, <laughs> what happened? Um, so mud again, uh, no way mud again, yeah, it's mud again. Yeah. So there was like half of your, half of a uh, half of a yard of width of mud, uh, right before like it gets to the grass, but this is like, it's this, this high really from the porch to the grass. So it's really, really short. It's like this high. And I, I'm on the phone. So like, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to practice literally like I'm, I'm, I'm out, I'm going to the grass to try to practice. Right. Like I'm not trying to like do something stupid. Like I'm trying to go out and trying to figure out some stuff because I had a tough first round again. Yeah. Trying to figure out some stuff and obviously on the phone. So I'm not really concentrating where I'm looking and my foot gets caught and I'm wearing golf shoes. So. Oh my God. You're in golf shoes. I'm in golf shoes. So it doesn't, (laughs) and that, and the, and the the toe part is like kind of slippery. So like I, so my, my toe slips backwards and I, oh gosh! And I unfortunately roll it, and it pops on me. And when you hear the pop, when you when you when you kind of twist your ankle, it's not a really good sign. Mm-mm. And when you when you sprain it, you're like, you know how it goes away after like 10, 20 seconds. You're like, oh man, that hurts, and it kind of yep. goes away. You take it off. I was down for like a few minutes. Like, man, I, this is like I can still feel it. Like this is bad. Um, Are you and hooting and hollering? Are you like a flopping like a fish right now, no, calling so for anybody? The- so I'm on the phone, so I'm like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to not act like, I, well, I just did something stupid, but I'm not trying to act like, oh, this hurts. Like, I'm trying to like play it cool. I'm just, I'm just trying to like, you know, make like, kind of really not you know, make a big deal out of it because it's just, a, I just thought it was a sprain. So, mm-hmm. um, but like, I knew it was like it wasn't normal, so I iced it right away. Um, you know, taped it up, went to bed, and I wake up. I'm like, I go to the bathroom. Oh, this is fine. And I, and I take the tape off and it's just like swollen. Like it's no way. Br- like it's just bruised up. I'm like, and I show my dad and he's like, man, this is like, if it hurts, just don't, it's not worth it. Like you got playoffs coming up. Like it's okay. Like it's. Cause you just shot what in the first round. I shot three over. So I didn't have a really great first round. So like I, I knowing that I need to shoot under, I need to shoot under par. I think three over made the cut. So I, well, at that time I thought maybe two over was going to make it. So realizing, mm-hmm. okay, I need to shoot one under par or better to make the cut with one leg. Like, man, I shot three over with two legs and like, I'm supposed to shoot <laughs> one under with one leg. <laughs> like what, what are the odds? So I'm trying to calculate this in my brain. I'm like, okay, let's just try to go to the golf course and I'm barely walking. Like, it's just like, obviously smile, you know, from the, sh- from once you get off the shuttle, um to the clubhouse it's a long walk right and it takes like maybe five to ten minutes to walk there it took right. me 25 minutes to get to the clubhouse like i was walking so slowly like i was just getting lapped by everyone and people were asking <sighs> like what's up and i'm like man like i just can't walk like it's just too painful and i see and i see my trainer i see hoser and he goes yeah it's i mean it looks doesn't look great but um, you can just tape it up and see, like, I think, I think it'll be fine. Like he's kind of giving me some tough love saying like, dude, like hockey, like I played hockey, like we played with broken bones and like, classic. Dude, this, yeah, just, just, just go. And Zach, and then Zach comes in and he's like, um, you know, he was telling me like how he did the same thing, but on his left ankle. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. And he, mine was on the right. So he's like, Oh dude, you're, you'll be fine. Like as long as it's all on the left, like you're, be, you're gonna be okay. I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to try and play. Um, and obviously the medics came in. They're like, okay, we're going to tape it up where you don't use your ankle. So it's, so you don't like, you don't use it. So it doesn't, you don't hurt yourself. So you can't get any worse. So that was kind of like, that got me to be, be able to kind of go through the round and play. And 
Um, so I did you get on the clock ever that day? (laughs) I did not. No. So I did not. I was, so I was walking so slowly that Joe had so much time to get all the numbers. And as soon as I got up there, he's like this and this and this, I just took my club and hit the ball. Um, (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, so like warming up, I'm like, I ha- like, I'm not able to hold my finish at all. I'm coming off my finish. I'm like, man, this sucks. Like I have to plan this and, and it's starting to blow. Like really like it's so easy. I think in those situations just to give up, just call it a day. And like, you know, I've been in the UK for a week and a half. And I kind of miss home already. And um, it's so easy to call quits. And I really just told myself like, well, you just had a tough finish of the Scottish. Like, you know, you got to be able to kind of dig this out. And the first hole, man, it took me like, by the time the guys got up to the second, like to the second shots, I just barely, I just barely got to the fairway. Like I wasn't able to walk at all. And, um, and first few holes go by and I'm like, I'm, I'm hitting, I'm, I'm striping the crap out of it. Like I'm hitting it so unbelievable. I'm like, man, this is really nice. Let's, let's try to keep going. I birdie. You know, I have a few, I'm like a four under after nine. I'm like, holy smokes. Like, this is unbelievable. Like, this is great. And like, I'm, and then I bogey 11 and I par out and I finish three under for the day. And even for the tournament, I'm like, that is probably one of the best rounds I've played all year. Like, especially on the condition, like. Friday was hard. Dude, it was, it was tough, man. It was windy and all this. And just to be able to kind of come out and all and shoot under par, but with just with that one leg and. Um, no, it really, I was kind of proud of myself to be able to kind of push through because even though I withdrew after I made the, I made the cut just to be able to kind of prove myself that, you know, I really don't give up. And, um, no, it was, uh, no, it was, it was a good moment for me. Yeah. The, one of the coolest things I saw, uh, I was back and saw on TV, Ben Harrison, your agent carrying you after the round. That was, that was pretty good. That was, that, <laughs> and, and really you probably needed it at the time. I could not walk. I was done. Like I could not, I was in so much pain. I was not able to take another step. Like the funny thing was the video didn't get it. Like as soon as we, as he went like five yards and put me down, like it didn't, it wasn't like he carried <laughs> me to the clubhouse. The whole video made it look like that. Come on, Benny. We, we went, we went five yards and he put me down and walked, but uh, no, it's but. <laughs> a great gesture. It was a good gesture. Exactly. 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 Well, I'm going to give a quick spoil alert to all the listeners. And you would think that, oh, he probably finished, you know, 30th place or something like that. Well, he finished second at the Open Championship on a bum ankle. Tom, where does that rank as far as your greatest achievements in the game of golf? Oh, it's up there. Without a doubt, it's up there. Um, uh, Obviously, you know, when you win twice, it's just because you win. But I think it's it could almost probably above like rank above just because of how I was feeling and just what I went through this year, just mentally and all these things, like just to be able to kind of have my best finish in, in, in the last major of the year, um, just to have my best finish really was, was, was just so unbelievably sweet. And, um, to kind of going through some, going through some tough times this year with some finishes and just kind of, you know, have Joe at that, at that moment, just kind of, especially the week after the Scottish, you know, just having that finish was really, it was really special. Really was. Well, it was a heck of a week, man. And uh, I know you're going to keep building off of that at major championships, but you know, one of the things I've noticed about you this year is you play a lot of practice rounds with high level players talking about Scotty, Jordan, Max, JT, you know, just to name a few. And I think it's pretty rare for a rookie and I, I call you a rookie because that's how the PGA tour classifies classifies mm-hmm. you, even though you played sure, the year sure. before, but still, you know, to, to get experience and, and wisdom from those guys, is there anything that you kind of picked up on over the course of this year uh, from, from those guys? Um, yeah, obviously, you know, for someone who's like starting out, you know, if, to be able to kind of, play practice rounds, really pick their brains. Um, it's helped me personally, like kind of speed up the process, I guess, because of like, I have a lot of questions. I'm always, I'm always curious and to be able to kind of have the opportunity to ask the guys who've been through it all, um, really, really pick their brains about the little things. It's really special, man. It's, um, 
I think one of the big things was I think Scotty was was telling me this year about I think it was it was our flight to the PGA. We just finished the Byron Nelson. We're on the flight, and I asked him like, "Hey, man, like, I really feel like you know, like I'm, I feel like I'm playing decent, but I'm just not playing well. Like I'm not able to have not being I'm not putting up a score on the board. Like it's just it's so frustrating." And he's like, "He's like, dude, you're so, you're so young. Like don't don't rush anything." Um, like you're going to be just fine. He was telling me like, he was just kind of basically really taking the pressure off me a little bit because I was just, again, having the fall that I had and suddenly rising to, you know, 13th in the world and coming, you know, so many things are coming at you fast. You feel like you just need to keep going at that pace. And it's def- it's never like that. You know, you've kind of really going to like courses like Bay Hill and players and all these places. Like there's so, there's, they're so hard for like first timers. Like I think just not knowing really how, how big like a penalty shot is like on those golf courses, you really don't know until you experience it. And so it was kind of hitting that bump for me was a little frustrating, um, which to, I don't think it should be, but for some reason it, it really was. Um, and as frustrating as was, obviously talking to him about it, like, you know, I think Ted, you know, Ted Scott was there as well. And they were, they were both telling me like, you know, don't rush anything. You, you got to be able to experience it. Like he had that same thing when he first came up on tour, like how he was like, how he had, you know, his feelings about the game and, you know, the struggles that he went through and the mental stuff that he went through. Uh, so, do, you know, just to be able to kind of hear his opinions on that, like he's a, he's a big brother to me, like in Dallas, like he gives me, so much crap it's unbelievable (laughs) but at the same time he it's because he you know according to his lovely wife meredith it's because he loves me but sometimes it doesn't feel like that way but no it's uh you know he's he's been really nice to me uh especially you know really generous and he definitely points it out he's like you'll never find someone as nice as me as generous as me who shares you know their opinions Tom, like you'll never find someone like me. So, um, no, but it's, it's all love. And, you know, I really do appreciate it. Yeah. And that's, uh, not exact. I mean, when I think about that crew that I just kind of talked about Scotty and those boys, you know, I used to follow Jordan around as much as I could with how intelligent he was. Oh. And I, I would pick up so much information from him and I still do now. I just go, when I go watch you guys play practice rounds and, and I'll just ask questions and, Plenty of things I always pick up. And one of the things I did pick up from Jordan was that you joined them for Christmas dinner this year in Dallas. And are we going to credit Annie's Jordan's lovely wife, her cooking for you getting four plates? Are you just an animal when it comes to eating food? (laughs) Um, I, I could be an animal a little bit, not, not terrible, but a little bit of an animal when it comes to eating. I I like to eat. (laughs) good food but no like annie's cooking was unbelievable she did such an amazing job with you know even with with sammy there like she cooked some unbelievable steaks like we we made sure that you know the plates were clean and um definitely for me i don't like to go over to someone's house and leave food like but (laughs) it you know but at the same time it was really really good like it was like i don't just go and eat just to be polite it was because it was really really good and i was like man i wish i could be invited again <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you will be there their door is I always going to so. be open for I hope so. for you and you know i will say with with my experience playing kind of with those guys we just were just talking about i kind of struggled a little bit especially being a young guy with just the comparison game kind of like what you've talked about but also just being generally not as confident And kind of just not coming into my own as much as I normally would be if I was around people I was more comfortable with. But when I watch you, I don't see that in you at all. To me, like you playing a practice round at the Masters with Tiger, Rory and Fred Couples, like for most rookies or young people, they would be petrified of just playing with that group of of guys in such a big stage, even though it's a practice round. But but not you. What's Like for you, do you just, are you just so comfortable in your skin and you just know your game is so good and 
the more I play with high level players, the more I'm going to pick up information that's just going to help me long term. Yeah, for sure. Um, that I think that one is definitely up there. That practice round for sure. My first my first official practice round at the Masters was with was with Tiger, Rory, and Fred. That was uh, <laughs> it's definitely up there, man. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I like to use it as an opportunity to really like really it was my first time playing with tiger so like obviously you know 99.9 percent of golfers idle and you know i really just it was really my first chance to be able to kind of be able to play and see him in action and ask him a lot of things and yeah but i'm just like like i said i'm just really comfortable like as in like i'm playing with the people that i've always looked up to and i i don't think you should shy away from that because you've worked so hard to have a chance of that. Like, why would you, of course you're going to have nerves. I, I was nervous on the first tee because you have to draw like a hook of three wood on 10. Like <laughs> I didn't want to, I didn't want to like pull hook and hit the tree. Like, you know, I was, yeah, obviously there's, always, there's always, obviously there's always pressure, but like um, just realizing that, you know, it's just like, man, what a, what a dream. Like it's right. to be able to have a chance. Like it's such a blessing. And I just kind of try to tell myself, so tell myself tell tell myself that all at all times just to kind of ease the nerves and just kind mm-hmm. of you know be able to kind of roll the rock well i think you have maturity kind of beyond your years and and obviously talent to back that up as well and just kind of reflecting on the past year you know you win it your first year you win it Wyndham championship and then now here we are we're in Wyndham week you know how do you think you've grown as a tour pro and just as a human being a lot this year has been definitely a big learning curve for me um i think more importantly more as a human being than a golfer because the experiences that that i've had this year with you know um when sometimes golf especially when it doesn't go your way how you react to that and how i think your personality really shows when things don't go well more than when it goes well because it's so easy to be happy and uh, when things are going well, you know, be nice to people. But when things aren't going your, well, going your way, like it's really hard to, you know, not be so negative towards yourself. And especially the, the game of golf, like you lose more than you win. So um, it definitely has been a big learning curve. Um, so definitely don't feel like I'm 21, you know, like uh, – it's my first year on tour and I feel like I'm 40 already. Like, you know, what, what, what are my next, what are my next few years going to be like? So, but it's, uh, no, it's been, it's been a really, really tremendous blessing for me to be able to, uh, experience this at my age instead of, you know, being, you know, because being playing the PJ tour is a very small percentage in this, in this world. And to be able to do it at, um, at an early age is, you know, I feel very fortunate. Yeah, Tom, I don't know why in my head, I just keep on thinking you're like 28 or 29 years old. And I've known you for, for 15 years, but I've literally just known you for about a year and a half now. And I'm, and I'm, yeah. and I'm upset that I haven't known you for as many years as I have, but I tell you what, I cheer for you. Uh, you're a tremendous player talent and nothing gets me more excited when the, my NBC team comes to me and gives me my pairing for the day. And it says, Tom Kim, I get to watch him. <laughs> so I get very happy getting to watch you play golf and it's fun. Uh, it's fun to watch you play, man. You're a tremendous, tremendous guy. And I, I can't wait to continue to cheer you on and, and watch great and expect great things from you. I appreciate that. Thanks, Smiley.